high third grade. So for those of you who wanted to test to see if the amount of water would affect our worms, changing the environment that way, we're doing a little follow-up now on our experiment. Now, I want to apologize. I already started this this morning, you know, checking on them, and I thought I was filming. So you're going to see some changes in this where I added some food because I felt the food was low when I first inspected them. But yeah, I guess I didn't press the right button on the video camera. So there is a little extra lettuce in here. I uh, want to make sure they had a little more food. Okay, so I mixed it in the top part as well as the bottom part. So I mixed in a little more lettuce, but I also had separated them. Whoops, taking this out to take a look. And I gotta admit, it's also a little more smelly right now. And I did find one worm um, that I think passed away. So he didn't do so well. So I do have, and because it was a little more mushy, I'm gonna use a plastic bag for my fingers. Um, but we do have a couple of worms down here on this part. And let's see how we're doing with worms in this upper area. It's also colder, i got to say that. It's a little chillier day today, so we'll see how the worms are doing. So I did see one. Oh, got my cat. He's helping me do the experiment. Thanks, Tigger. Not sure exactly how he's helping. So, okay, this might actually be a two-handed process for me to properly check things out. Okay. I might just have to say, forget it, use my hands. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it's hard for me to count them right now while trying to also hold the camera. But yeah, I do see one over there. He's working his way across the water, trying, it looks like, to get to a drier location, but I'm not positive. Anyway, um, I'll try to take a look through and then share with you guys how many I see in each section, but I definitely need two hands to do this. Okay, so I counted through, and as you see, my cat is counting for me too. Um, so I counted through and we started with five up here and just now when I counted I count seven. Um, and I want you to see something interesting. Once I took this container out you know we saw two worms they moved quickly across the water. I thought I saw another one over here a moment ago. I don't see him now but you can see one. He's trying to get out and um, a couple of you in the planning of this experiment had said to me, you have made observations that when it rains, you see a lot of worms out on top of the soil. So we're just making observations. I'm not giving you any conclusions right now. I want you to draw your conclusions. Um, knowing that we started with six worms in the bottom. I can only find two right now. And we started with five at the top, and now I find seven. Of course, we seem to be missing a couple at the moment. Um, but not just that, just looking at the behavior of this one. And I want you to draw your own conclusion. Oh, I see the other one. Here he is, coming up at this edge. Uh, draw your own conclusion about how much water, or whether or not worms like a lot of water. Okay, so... I'm going to leave this. Good morning, third grade. Okay, now this is our second setup of the water experiment, and it's been actually a day and a half, not a day. I got a little caught up doing some other things, um, but I thought let's check out to see how the worms are doing. Okay, so remember we had one side has this aluminum pan that would help hold the water, but then the other side didn't have as much water. So we're going to check on this side first and let's see how many worms we find. It's not totally dry. There is some moisture. And again, we had mixed up some extra food. Because I will admit, I am using these buckets repeatedly. Um, 
course in school I would have had more buckets so I wouldn't have to repeat experiments in the same buckets uh, I didn't see any I mean I don't know about you guys I was busy talking but I did not see any so let's check out this side that's a little wet let's see The moment, it looks like all the worms escaped. Let's keep going. It did put 10 worms in here, right? Or 11? <gasps> there we, no, that's lettuce leaf. All right, let's see what's going on here. I've never had this at all. Oh, there we go, but that's only one. Here's the second one. He also doesn't look too happy. Like I woke him up. Oh, third one. Oop, there's another one. Four. We know there was so much more in here. Well, so far, and I'm guessing I need two hands to do all this. Looks like they did prefer the moisture. Oh, I got another one down here in the corner. So I found five. Oh, let's look again. Looking a little closer in the corner. Six. Okay, one, two, three, four. Probably covered up some of the others I already found. Oh, don't need a rock in there. Okay, so I'm catching, I'm finding six in this moist area. Okay, by the way, this ends up kind of confirming that we should always have a good number of worms because sometimes, well, we can't find them anymore. Um, they do have the ability to escape, to climb out of these buckets. I'm not putting a lid on the buckets. Um, and who knows, maybe that's what happened. Um, but anyway, I'm not going to share a conclusion, just observations with you guys. So on the dry side, or the side that didn't have as much water, I didn't see any. And on the other side, we did. Now keep in mind, we did this experiment twice. We also did it where there were holes in the bucket, and it got super wet at the bottom, and not as wet at the top. So using that information, what can you conclude about worms and how much water or moisture there might be in the soil and how it might affect their behavior?